Hello everyone, welcome to a special episode of a new thing. And for this one, I gotta wear, whoops, my tinfoil hat. I have to be better. You know, I really need to spend more time in conspiracy circles because I feel like there has to be a better way to wear this thing. But you can tell I'm not really into conspiracy theories because I don't really know how to wear the tinfoil hat. But it doesn't matter. Uh, we're here, and we're here to talk about conspiracy theories. But before we talk about conspiracy theories, I wanted to talk about the sovereignty of God because I think it's really important to think about that because my question for us today is why are we so attracted to conspiracy theories okay that's that's the question i'm going to be attempting to answer but first i want to talk about the sovereignty of god so let me pull up our internet for today this is isaiah 45 and i'm going to read about uh a few verses from this probably about verse 5 to verse 9 so it says, I'm the Lord. This is, uh, by the way, this is God in Isaiah. He's talking to Cyrus, who's the emperor of Persia, and he refers to him as his anointed one, his Mashiach, which is where we get the word Messiah. Of course, there's a difference between someone being anointed by God to do something and the Messiah, who's a very specific character. But anyway, here, Cyrus, right, a non-Jew, king of Persia, is being told by God these things. He says, I'm the Lord and there is no other. Apart from me, there is no God. I will strengthen you, though you have not acknowledged me, so that from the rising of the sun to the place of its setting, people may know there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form the light and create darkness. I bring prosperity and create disaster. I, the Lord, do all these things. You heavens above rain down my righteousness. Let the clouds shower it down. Let the earth open wide. Let salvation spring up. Let the righteousness flourish with it. I, the Lord, have created it. Woe to those who quarrel with their maker, those who are nothing but potsherds, among the potsherds on the ground. Does the clay say to the potter, what are you making? Does your work say the potter has no hands? So here the Lord is talking about his role as being in control of everything, right? He's sovereign over, over everything. And the interesting thing about this is he says this to a pagan king who probably never heard these words, right? These are words for the Jewish people to understand that God is in control and for Cyrus to understand, assuming he ever heard this, right? That God is the one who's in control of everything. People can be tempted to think they're in control, but they're not. That sometimes the Lord is just working his will in the world, right? All right. So the second one I have is Deuteronomy 29, 29 which says the secret things belong to the Lord our God, but things revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may follow all the words of this law. So Deuteronomy 29, 29 is, is here talking about, this is the second giving of the law, and this idea, right, that there are some things that we just won't know. Not everyone is going to know everything about everything, uh, and we have to be okay with that. But the Lord has given us what's important to know in the law and in his word. And we actually have, you know, the, the, this idea that it's not just the, the, the five books of the Torah, but even like the other parts of the Old Testament and the New Testament have been revealed to us by God to teach us about him. And what is true is, is in those pages. So that's what we need to focus on. We don't have to worry about all of the answers why to everything all the time, right? Because we just simply won't know. God is not spatially or temporally located like us. So he's not going to worry about telling us those things, especially if there isn't much of a reason for us to know them outside of our own curiosity and things like that, right? It's just trusting in the Lord. That's a big deal. All right, so what do these two passages together teach us? Well, they teach us there are some things we aren't going to know, but that the Lord is always in control and that the Lord has control both over good things and over bad things. And that is something that he's working for his own glory and we just have to trust that that's what he's doing, right, as he calls us to. Now, the reason I bring this up in relation to conspiracy theories, especially why do we believe in conspiracy theories, is that recently I saw this wonderful YouTube video. Uh, it's uh, the Kennedy assassination inside the book depository by this guy called Let Me Know. I'll, I'll, um, I'll link it in the description. Highly recommend watching. It's an hour and a half. It's, like, really good very high quality uh i think it's great his jack the ripper video is also really good i've seen a lot of his stuff but like 
he does a lot of stuff on like cr true crime or historical things and the kennedy assassination just came out last week this video is very good it, let me see it has 5.3 million views it deserves more than that so check it out it, it's really really well done you'll actually watch it and you'll be like i can't believe like you know just th that this isn't done by and i mean he is a professional because this is probably his full-time job making youtube videos but like the way that we normally like a studio right this is just like him putting these videos together probably with like hired help and things like that but still very impressive you know, pr presentation is just amazing off the charts here so anyway this in this video he talks about the kennedy assassination which i didn't know that much about other than it was lee harvey oswald in the the building with the gun right but i was very familiar with all the people who believe that this is it was a conspiracy right either that it was the russians or it was the fbi or it was the mob or it was all three or whatever right and he talks about he just gives the details of what happened he shows all the events that kind of took place and the different ways that people said that kind of give root to these conspiracy theories but ultimately he comes down on the side that there wasn't any conspiracy theory right that lee harvey oswald shot jfk um and uh it, it's very very well done though so uh check it out but i i want to say that like i think it's interesting that really the the thing i know most about the kennedy assassination before watching this video wasn't any of the particulars outside of the people who were named like lee harvey oswald but just the fact that no one or not no one i'm sure like there are mostly people who just are like yeah that's what happened but a lot of people don't accept the official story and this happens with all sorts of things right i mean i was you know i grew up in the wake of 9 11 9 11 famously brought together a bunch of conspiracy theorists i mean i remember going to ground zero like when there was still when it was still like an active site of like people were still moving things away right and there i remember there were protesters or people out there trying with signs that said you know bush did 9 11 or you know 9 11 is conspiracy that type of stuff and handing out dvds or handing out pamphlets or whatever i remember that i was i was really young at the time but i i remember that and uh and so this is like a very common thing that happens right we usually end up somehow with one person or more people having these ideas of conspiracies right that this is a big plot done in order to achieve something else right and that's that's what becomes very famous and there's hardly a, a big event that passes by that there isn't a ton of conspiracies about right we saw this in in uh 2020 with the covid pandemic right like and i'm not saying one way or another about any of that stuff because i guess that's still a really live issue for people but like the idea i'm sure you can remember that there were all sorts of theories out there founded or unfounded on where it came from who was controlling it all that other time was it controlled all these other types of things right so I, I thought of this again recently because I think it was two weeks ago or a week and a half ago, right, that this one guy, that, like, so first of all, I want to just say as a, as a political hound, congressional hearings happen all the time on all sorts of stupid stuff. A lot of people are like, the U.S. government is having a congressional hearing on UFOs. This proves that UFOs exist. No, they don't, right? The, U, the U.S. government, like, congressional hearings, some of the dumbest stuff in American history has been said. I, I always remember there's this one where they're this was back in the 2000s they were questioning this admiral about guam right so guam is a an american territory in the pacific big naval base and that's really all that's there um and uh and one of the senators uh or congressmen said aren't you worried that if we keep putting people on guam it's going to flip over like you know, like it was like a like something you could flip over. That's not an island, right? That and the 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 admiral was like, uh, well, I don't think that's possible. So just want to say that just because it's happening in Congress doesn't mean it's real. One doesn't mean there's any validity to it. Two and doesn't mean that people don't say the dumbest things, right? We have to understand that politics is big, and sometimes these things are brought forward not for reasons of aliens in this case, right? But rather to talk about national defense and national security. So anyway this this one whistleblower comes out right and he's talking about how there's aliens and this happened like a month or two ago i know this because my brother's a huge aliens guy and goes hook line and sinker for stuff like this and so you know he's sending me clips and things like that and basically all the time it, this guy is is saying they're like all right what did you find and he's like well i've 
I've had people report this to me and I've seen this and they're like, okay, do you have any proof? And he's like, no, but you have to trust me, that type of thing, right? So it didn't prove anything, nothing happened, but this is a huge deal, right? Because there's such distrust in government these days that people would really have no interest in what the government has to say about its own programs or anything like that, right? There's more interest in conspiracies. And of course, well, I'm losing my tinfoil hat here. Of course, this is like kind of proven true when some of these things are revealed to be deeper, like Watergate, right, is a very good example of this, or Cointel Pro is another good example of this, of things the United States kind of keeps hidden in order to do whatever they want, right? But the vast majority of things people believe are, uh, are different in the sense that, like, all of those things were revealed by whistleblowers, <laughs> And these things uh, are usually not, and they're just speculated, or they come with lots of bad genealogy. And what, what I mean by that is, um, is that when it comes to, like, the Kennedy assassination, for instance, right? So the idea here, among many people who believe in this stuff, is believe that there were multiple shooters, um, so they could make sure he was dead, that everything was planned out, so Kennedy could be assassinated, and it was, like, the mob, or um the fbi or the soviet union who carried it out right and the united states covered this up for you know x reason xyz reasons right well kennedy died a long time ago <laughs> i know for some of you who are in the congregation it might just feel very recently uh you might re remember the actual time that kennedy died uh it might be one of your earliest memories or maybe like you were pretty uh advanced in age already uh in your early 20s or whatever when that stuff happened but you probably remember um some of you when kennedy was assassinated and um the idea here is and i don't mean to say this it's been a really long time right it's been decades and decades and decades and nothing has come out to prove that it was a an a, a uh conspiracy and why i think that's important is is that the way that i i don't believe in any conspiracy theories really and uh the reason why is that because basically the longer something goes on like goes on for oh now oh, there it goes i guess i'm not protected against the radio towers anymore uh the the longer something goes on as a conspiracy right the more and more people have to cover it up like the moon landing right imagine everyone who worked at nasa had to agree to lie to the American people and to the world forever that they lied about getting on the moon. That would that's that's the whole thing, right? Or at least a, a group of hundreds of people had to do it. And that had to continue to be passed down, right? And no one has spo spilled the beans about it. No one's released the documents about it, right? The, the mathematical possibility of that being true is so low. <laughs> Most people, right, within just months or years of something happening will release these things we've seen this happen multiple times in my lifetime with different government things or like with watergate or with cointel pro right people just go like this feels wrong and people need to know about it and they just release the documents to the media or someone else this has happened many times so the idea that that it's interesting about conspiracy theories is it just requires so much uh so much to unfaith in, in humanity basically to continually lie and you have to c can give yourself reasons like oh we're not ready for it or the government is you know waiting for everyone to die before they do it or things like that right it's very very convenient um from from that standpoint so the reason i bring this up is because i wanted to talk about one of the most famous assassinations that ever happened and this is uh a uniform uh here and you can see that there's these blood stains on it right up here and across the chest area you can see this massive tear in the coat right above the left breast uh, of this and this is one of the most important uh, historical events that ever happened not actually because i think the people involved were that important but just the chain of events it set off ended up being very important and this is uh if you don't know uh, this is the uniform of the Archduke of Austria-Hungary, Franz Ferdinand, uh, that he was wearing on the day that he was assassinated by uh, Gavriel Princep in uh, uh, in Sarajevo. Um, or Bel Belgrade? No, Sarajevo. Uh, which is in 
uh, the Balkans. And so uh, you can see a picture of him here. It's colorized, obviously. Um, for years later, they didn't have color photography at this point uh, in any real sense of the word. So he's, you can see him, though, wearing this uniform uh, in this special photo. And on the right, you can see the uniform itself um, on the day. And you can just, you can see the blood, right? It's so interesting, just as a historical, that we can just, we have this thing and it just connects us to something that happened over 100 years ago. And the thing that happened is, it, it, this is the guy whose death sets off the First World War, right? Millions of people die. And the story of his assassination is one of the most interesting stories of all time because it shouldn't have happened. And I don't mean this in, like, the moral sense of, like, oh, God, why did you? No. I'm saying by all rational accounts, like, if there, if you don't, if you're an atheist or you, you don't believe in fate, right, reading the story of Archduke Ferdinand's assassination will, will I think, like, like really challenge you to think of whether or not fate exists because it's like this guy was fated to be assassinated by Gabriel Princep, who is this kid, by the way. He's 23. So I, Oswald was also young. I think he was like 23, 20, so like 26 maybe, something like that, when he, he killed the, the president. Um, and so uh, he's in Sarajevo, right? He's in his car. He's driving around. He's there to do a tour. And there's this uh, this nationalist uh, Slavic nationalist group called the the Black Hand, I believe is is what they were called. Um, and they uh, something Hand, I think it's Black Hand. Uh, it doesn't really matter that much, uh, which Gabriel Prince was a part of. But the whole point of it here is that these are a bunch of young guys who want their their national sovereignty because austria hungary controlled a lot of the balkans like this is the time of nationalism where a lot of countries are starting a lot of independent ethnicities are starting to assert themselves as being nations and these old empires that used to kind of rule over all these different peoples are now having to put down revolts and things like that and so they go we're going to assassinate the the archduke um probably not thinking that it would start the first world war right people really don't know what's going to happen but just to just to destabilize the Austro-Hungarian regime and maybe uh, lead to a uprising or something like that, right? So he's going to Sarajevo to do a tour of the city. He gets there. He's going around in a motorcade, right? Uh, and uh, he's uh, well uh, protected and offended. And they try to assassinate him. They try. A guy throws bombs. Um, and they fail one guy so they run away one guy tries to kill himself by taking cyanide and he can't uh he fails and so they grab him out of the water the other one they grab um and uh like they planned it out they, they had bombs and everything and they, they everything failed everything that they were going to try and do failed and uh now of course like they throw these bombs and they still hurt people so uh franz ferdinand right uh, it, it decides that everyone's telling them hey you should just leave sarajevo he decides instead to go to the hospital. So he goes to the hospital, and there he visits everyone who was wounded in the parade and people like that, right? And it's kind of a sad thing because whether or not you like monarchies or empires or whatever, it, there is a kind of irony here that Franz Ferdinand was probably actually the best person to come to the throne for these nationalist groups because he probably would have been a lot more lenient than who's going to who would come after him or the person he's been replacing. Um, but anyway, he goes and he visits people who were wounded. And then he gets back, and every, again, everyone's telling him, no, you should leave. And so he gets back in his car, and they're driving uh, to go somewhere, I think their final destination. And the driver uh, makes a wrong turn. Now, during this time, Gavriel Princep, who was part of this original group, uh, he didn't throw the bomb or whatever, so he he's kind of dejected. He's like, we've lost... Um, he kind of wanders around the city and he ends up at a cafe and orders, I think he orders a Coke, funnily enough. And he's sitting there at the cafe and all of a sudden, here comes the front, the Archduke's car, undefended, because the driver accidentally took a long turn. And he, it gets worse, right? He, he drives, not just drives past them, but right in front of the cafe, the car backfires and, uh, and and stops right it loses its its momentum and, and just and just dies so the guy has to reset it or whatever which on these old cars right you'd crank it up and things like that and so stops right there and gavriel princep realizes that he's staring right 
right at the Archduke and that he's just been dropped right in front of him even though they thought he was going to fail. And so he pulls his, out his pistol and he shoots and kills uh, the Archduke and the Archduke's wife uh, right in front of him. Now, when you hear a story like that and you're like, you're like, oh man, I don't believe in fate. Like, ooh, this is like one of those things where it's just, <laughs> it's just like, man, if you don't believe in fate, then the, the amount of coincidence that had to happen for this is just astronomical, which is fine if you don't believe. Like, I'm just saying it's just one of these things that really tempts you to believe in something like that. Um, now, as a Christian, obviously, I believe God is in control. And so God was in control of this situation, allowed this to happen, allowed World War One to happen. There's all sorts of theological questions you could you could have from that, right? But the idea here is that the Lord does this these things for his glory and for his purposes, which we might not know for a long time. But anyway, right, this is what starts this. This young guy who whose whole their whole actual plan failed ends up just getting the right chance to kill someone and so many conspiracies are like that right so many things sometimes had to go wrong like if you read a if you read about like the 9 11 thing there are so many so many small things where they could have got them but for whatever reason they just slipped by uh, uh, same thing with the lee harvey oswald right like there are things like he just happened to get a job at the place where JFK was going to drive by and he was able to shoot him because he he had that opportunity it's just this is how it this is how life works and if you know your own life if you actually think about it right maybe you've had close calls maybe you've had things that happen one way or another and you look back and you're like man if this other thing happened my life would be on a completely different trajectory and that's just sometimes how it happens and and that's that's there's there's no like there's no un way that we can understand it those are the secret things that belong to the lord now i think the reason remember my question is like why do we like conspiracy theories so much i think the reason that we like conspiracy theories so much is because they allow us to show that there is control that there isn't so much randomness because a lot of people i think whether they admit it to themselves or not struggle with the idea that like a nobody <laughs> like Gavrilo Princip could start one of the most important things to happen ever by shooting someone and that somehow this this kid right I mean I guess he wasn't a kid this this young guy without much going for him in the world was able to actually be one of the most important people ever just by by chance and that doesn't feel right I think to many people, right? There's it's like, no, this isn't how life works, right? There has to be someone in control or something in control or, or some levers. And of course, around the, the Franz Ferdinand assassination, you'll find all sorts of conspiracy theories about this too. Same thing for Lee Harvey Oswald, same thing for all sorts of things that happen, right? But the idea that I, I'm, I push here is that we have to, I think, as humans grow comfortable with the idea that we aren't going to be in control of everything and that God is and that sometimes things just happen history is really funny that way as someone who studies it's like some of the things that happen just have to be perfectly set up or seem as though like it's going to fail but somehow everything goes perfectly for it now now I mean that's you know a little bit of an overstatement and I can attach that to everything but my point here being is that we these things happen for God's purposes and God is in control and that can be tough for us, but it's really important that we realize that because we can understand that God is who he is and that his purposes are good. Now that, that doesn't mean that we, you know, we don't have to think about things or challenge narratives or whatever, but I think we have to understand that we can't just be, we, we can't just under, we can't just think that, that humans have more control than they do because we really don't we really don't have that much control and sometimes right it isn't the diplomats or the presidents or the generals or the clergy people or all of these important or the intellectuals all these important people in our society who actually who are told are the engines of power in the world you know sometimes it's not them who do these things sometimes it's just a kid and 
that's what we have to realize. And that's what we have to realize that we don't have as much control as we thought we did. So that's what I was talking about today. I hope it was interesting to you guys. And uh, I will see you guys next week for more videos. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Thursday. Peace out.